Hey everyone, it's Kels from scrapbook.com and I am here today to show you 17 ways to use your die cut cutouts. So this is just a sample of some of the fun packages of die cut cutouts you can get. They come in all shapes and sizes. Some of them are meant for journaling, banners, accent pieces, numbers, arrows. There's just a sheer variety of things that are available on the market today. They are fun and colorful and easy to use. So let me get started and I will let you know what techniques we are displaying and I will show you some samples. The first way to use your die cut cutouts is to place them directly on your photos to help tell your story. As you can see in this example, I've done that in several places. I've placed them here as a, pay, as a picture accent. I used one as a journaling accent here. I've got a few more dotted around just to enhance the look and to create some subtitles of my pages. This is a pocket page style layout which really lends itself to this technique because as you can see you have a limited space within which to actually design and work with unlike a traditional layout. And so I was able to get a lot more journaling and a lot more descriptive bits on my pages by using my die cut cutouts right on my photos. Number two is to create a pull tab on a layout for your hidden journaling. So in this example, I simply use this cute little die cut and the journaling card from the same collection, and I created a pull tab for some hidden journaling. And that way it just tucks in nicely behind my photo when I don't wanna see the journaling, and you would never even know that there was journaling there, but by simply pulling out, you can read about my son. You can also use your die cut cutouts as frames. So as you can see here, I've framed it in, and these are additional cutouts as well that I've used on these cards for Father's Day and graduation. Here's another frame. Just adds a little bit of pep and spark and a little, looks like you thought about it a little bit more, even if you really didn't. You can also use your die cut cutouts to create a simple, easy, fast banner for any type of party or celebration. I simply used clothespins. I tied some fun, fancy twine around each of the clothespins. And then I simply took cutouts and I folded them over and stapled them onto the twine. And I added additional die cuts at the bottom as accents, again, with just a stapler. And I've got this really fun party accent that I can hang even on a cake or something super fun for my daughter's birthday. You can also pop up your cutouts using three-dimensional pop dots or foam dot adhesive or squares and it really adds just that little bit of dimension to your page where normally it would be flat and a bit boring. I also added just a little bit of sparkle on some of these by putting a self-adhesive rhinestone gem in some select places on my popped up cutouts. Okay, number six, you can use them, that was the wrong card, you can use them to stuff envelopes to create sort of an interactive element. You can give your dads and grads tickets to redeem. Again, I've just taken a couple of my cutouts and placed them in a pocket just for an interactive effect, whether it's useful or not. It adds a little bit of an element of surprise and makes your cards unique. Okay, this might be my favorite way to use them. Technique number seven is to use them as a dessert topper. Isn't this amazing? We have a delicious donut, super cute, cute feed the monsters die cut mounted on a toothpick or any other type of party stick. It can be a cocktail stick. It can be uh, just something that you find at the craft store that's blank and all you do is add your die cut to it. 
Now, Fancy Pants, this is Fancy Pants' new boy line called Be Different. And she actually went ahead and did the work for you. So she has the die cut shape on a stick and then it is self-adhesive. So it's already pop dotted and ready to go for dimension on your pages. Love these, so cute and delicious. My number eight way to use die cut cutouts is to create more journaling space on a layout. Oftentimes I find myself creating and playing and I'm getting so excited about putting pictures and stickers and techniques on my pages that I'm not telling my story. And I really am all about the journaling. So by simply placing some die cut cutouts, gluing them down onto my page and creating accents with them and using some die cut cutout words as well as shapes and journaling boxes, I'm able to tell a whole lot more about my relationship with my daughter and what's going on in some of these fun photos by allowing myself more space using cutouts. I have a couple more examples for you of that. Here's one where I just took a whole bunch of flat die cut element pieces and I wrote on them and in doing my journaling I also colored in and I capitalized and I played a little bit with my handwriting to create a fun technique there as well. And again, same kind of concept. And as you can see, I tend to stick pretty much to the one side of the page. You could move things around a little bit. You could do them across the top, across the bottom, over here, straight down the middle. But I really, really love using them for journaling. And the number nine way to use cutouts is to create a collage or a border on a page. This gives your layout a little bit more of a busy, complex effect, but it's really appealing to the eye. So as you can see, I fully lined one side of my page with all of these multiple die cut cutouts. I put brads in some of them, but for the most part, I just left them flat and created a collage down the side to pull the eye into the center of my layout where my journaling is. Here's another example where I just took several pieces again and I created a border on the one page to bring everything into focus. And here's an example of another border across the top of a page. I just took a bunch of die cut cut out feathers and I stitched them directly onto the top to create a border and in a way the feathers point downward, again drawing your eye to my photo. The number 10 way to use your die cut is simply as confetti. Just have a little bit of fun with it. In this layout, I was intentional about where I placed my confetti and I did it in clusters, but you can see these die cut hearts are just dotted all around my layout. You can do it randomly or like I said, you can plan it and have a very strategic way that you're doing it. But I really love how they just add a little bit of color, a little bit of accent. Number 11 would be to use them on a holiday layout as ornaments. So you can see here, I had some vellum and some uh, acetate and just some regular cardstock die cut cutouts. And I placed them on the bottom of my page and by just adding a little bit of stamping in a stitched pattern, I could have also done this with my sewing machine or hand stitching, I was able to create a hanging ornament effect. And you can also use them as a journaling block here or on the second page of this layout. I actually used it as a subtitle. So I was able to take a cutout that looked like it should have had lots of journaling in it or a date or something like that. And I used it to create a whole title, Family Togetherness. You could use it as a subtitle or again, you can just use them as journaling but they are great ways to get extra words and accents onto your pages that you may not otherwise be able to include. Maybe you don't have enough alphabet letters to create the word. Maybe you don't have enough space. Togetherness is a particularly long word. So I was able to fit it by using a die cut. The 13th way to 
use your die cuts and cutouts is to take elements that are the same size, such as these couple of photos paired with this large die cut element. I took several smaller die cut elements and then several smaller still, and I paired them with my photos to create a really nice linear effect across my entire page by pairing them up. And then of course I put the focus on one photo by adding another die cut layer on top of that. You can also ink your edges on any of your die cut properties. So for example, on this square die cut here, I inked a little bit in just a light brushed gold. And it just pops the element out a little bit more. And then I stayed consistent with that and I also inked on my corrugated paper, on my silver piece, and on my card base itself. And I've done the same thing here. It's a little bit of a darker sample, but you can see it's got the same effect around the edges of this three by four die cut card. And then again, I stayed consistent and I inked every layer underneath. You can also create a super fun interactive card with by folding a die cut cutout. So this happened to be the word party in die cut form and I simply folded it accordion style and I placed it on a super quick thrown together card. But you get the idea. So if you were sending out party invitations, you could have this fun little interactive element for kids to pull and play with. And it's a really sweet way to invite somebody or say, come celebrate with us. The 16th way to use your die cut cutouts is really fun. We're gonna get a little technique-y. So I busted out my Ranger Ink nonstick, nonstick craft mat, and we are going to start to play a little bit. I picked out these two cutouts just because they struck me as a little bit boring. They came in one of my sets, and I really wanna add something fun to them. And by using Stickles Glitter Glue, or regular glitter, or a product called Glossy Accents, I'm gonna just show you how you can add a quick burst of color and shine and sparkle to these otherwise boring die cuts. So this is supposed to be an ice cream cone. To me, meh, not so exciting. So by taking just a little bit of our Stickles Glitter Glue, I'm gonna just trace the outline of my cone and I'm gonna pretend, of course, that it's a waffle cone, and I'm gonna maybe just fill it in with a little bit of a waffle pattern. And again, you would be taking a lot more time and skill to do this. I'm just quickly showing you. But imagine when that dries, how beautiful that is, how much more dimension that has, and how much more it even looks like an ice cream cone. And then let's just pretend this was like mint chocolate chip ice cream or something amazingly delicious. And you can just put cute little dots of an accent on there and all of a sudden that boring summer cutout of an ice cream cone is gorgeous, super fun. So I'm gonna do the same with the parasol top that's right next to it. So that's supposed to be maybe like a beach umbrella. Uh, you would take it down, obviously it would get a little bit wet maybe because it's at the beach or maybe you're getting rained on at the beach or in the summer, who knows. But either way, I'm gonna take my glossy accents and this is a product that dries clear and it dries dimensional. So by simply tracing the black lines on this die cut and letting this dry, I'm gonna actually get more dimension on this piece. So the color will stay completely the same, but it's gonna give a little bit of an outlined wet look to my parasol. And when I put it on my final page, I think I'll just be a little bit happier with it because it has just a little bit of extra, you know, just that something extra that appeals to the eye. I'm just using my piercer to hold this in place as I do this. And I apologize if you can't fully see it right now, but when I take my hand away. So you can see now you're gonna have this beautiful, glossy, sort of wet look parasol that you can add to your next page or card or title element. So don't forget about stickles, glossy accents, and even just regular loose glitter and some clear glue. They are great. Our last and final way to use your die cuts and cutouts, number 17, 
is simply to stamp or emboss on them. Uh, so I'm gonna show you with just a couple of different elements that I have here. I have a couple of frames from a baby boy die cut set. And then again, I went back to my summer set and I found a little sunshine. And I just wanna be able to show you some fast, hard techniques. I'm not a great stamper. I'm not a great embosser. But for the purpose of this, you're gonna get the idea and you're gonna be so much better at this than I am. You're gonna love the results. So here's my little sunshine die cut. I found a little bird stamp that I just love. He's just too cute and chipper. Makes me totally think of spring. So I'm gonna put him on my sun with some Versamark. So you're not gonna be able to see this ink, but then what's gonna happen is we're gonna dump some embossing powder on this. Okay, I chose blue, little bluebird, makes me happy. Do whatever makes you happy when you scrapbook people, it's important. And then because this is so small, I'm picking it up with my craft knife and I'm just gonna tap it off. And all that's gonna be left is my adorable little birdie. And then it's gonna get a little bit loud, but I'm gonna turn on my craft gun and let it heat up. And I'm gonna just place it next to my bird over the top. And as he gets warmer and warmer, you're gonna see that he'll start to emboss and he'll start to kind of come up off the paper in a really pretty way. I'm sorry, I'm blowing everything off of my mat here. Stick with me. I know you guys can't see this very well and I apologize for that. Okay. But there you have it. Super fast, super easy. And now you have this adorable, glittery, sparkly element where otherwise it was just flat and boring and not exciting. Okay, and then an even simpler technique if you're not the embossing type or even really an image stamper type like I am not, uh, you can simply put, you can take any type of a date stamp or word stamp. I have this really sweet baby boy one from Pebbles that I'm using with my Pebbles baby boy die cutouts and I'm using the two frames and I'm just going to take some cat eye chalk inks and I'm going to select a color. I'll probably go with this nice navy, this dark navy so that you can see it. And all I'm going to do, I don't necessarily care about the date for this particular sample, but I care about this little stamp right here. So I'm going to ink it up. And then I just want it to be stamped right in the center of this cute little frame so that I can use it on my layout. And so I'm just gonna place it down, rock it, and come up. And you see you have an adorable little stamped image. And again, you could, if you wanted to do the date, you could absolutely do the date. So let's ink that baby up. And let's say that I was putting this second frame here around a small photo of my son. I can simply try to line up my date as best I can on this little corner where there's some faux washi tape, rock it back and forth, and there you go. So you can see there are literally tons of things you can do with your die cut cutouts. These are just 17 of my most favorite techniques and examples. And I hope you are inspired. I hope you find ways to use them. They're so much fun and they come with just about every single collection on the market nowadays. Enjoy.